So today we are starting day three of our pattern stripe fabric. As you can see, I've got my drawing in front of me, which is um, still the state that it was um, as of the end of our day two. My background is established. My pattern covers my entire drawing. Um, you can see I still have value in my shades. Today, what you're gonna want to keep on hand while we work is again, kneaded eraser, chamois, fine charcoal, your measuring stick as always. I just actually put mine out of reach, but you're gonna want one, right? And we're gonna switch it up today a little bit. And we're gonna include compressed charcoal. All right, you can see I work with really small pieces of compressed charcoal, okay? So don't be super concerned, you know, if you only have a little bit of it left because a lot goes there, a little goes a long way, okay? So I keep all of this on me the whole time that I'm ready to work. And I'm also gonna show you a trick using a piece of our sketchbook paper, okay? This is for those of us who want to be blendy, blendy, blendy when we work, all right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rip off a piece of our sketchbook paper. And I'm going to not set it directly on my drawing because I'll smudge everything away. I'm gonna kind of just try to fold it into a little bit of an angular shape, right? See what I mean, how it's smaller here and longer there. Get it nice and creased. I'm gonna do it again, just to kind of reinforce it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold at an angle, right? Those of you who've ever made like paper football or anything, just kind of fold it at a right degree angle. I'm gonna start rolling this up real tightly. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of keep rolling it as tightly as I can. All right, sometimes I'll be better than others. It's not a perfect science. But once I've rolled it up enough and I'm gonna pinch it, pinch it together, all right? I can twist it really tightly, okay? You can buy blending stumps or you can make your own. So what I can do is I can use this. And it's gonna take a few times to build up charcoal on the tip of it, all right? But I can use this to blend out small areas. Okay, now if you have a blending stump, that works as well. I'm gonna kind of try to show you what one of those looks like. I believe I have one on hand. Sorry for the dead air. There's a blending stump, okay? You can buy one, but what you can see is it's just very tightly rolled paper. Now mine's not perfect, mine's not great, but it'll get the job done, okay? Now, what's important is, similar to before, you can see that some of my drawings have been blended out. What I can do is go in and try to reinforce some of my edges. The thing about working with fine charcoal, right, and I'm gonna use right here as an example, is if I take my chamois, I can completely erase the stripes that I've already got in place, right? So you have to be very gentle, okay? And, and I know that that can be 
a little bit frustrating, but it's important to remember to be delicate. You can always go back in and kind of erase areas out and reestablish stripes. But this is also why I want to work with really tiny pieces of charcoal, okay? Now, what's important is when I'm working with the compressed, I want to start establishing where my darkest dark is, okay? Now, the stripes on my fabric are black. And so it's easy to assume that that's gonna be where my darkest dark is. But my darkest dark is actually the folds where that black is, okay? And you can see where I've already brought in compressed charcoal because it's very stark and very different. Um, instead of starting down in the folds this time, I'm gonna start in the knot for you to see. And I'm gonna find where my darkest darks are. And my knot is actually got a piece of fabric that comes up behind here and that has a good amount of dark in it. it. Gets really light at the edge and I wanna keep that edge because I really like how that shadow pops, right? Now I'm gonna move quickly and I'm gonna lay in where I think my darkest darks are, all right? My other darkest dark is gonna be in here because this is where the fabric comes out of my knot, okay? And remember, it doesn't take a lot of compressed charcoal to lay in and push that contrast. And then what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take my teeny tiny little bit of vine charcoal and I'm gonna work over that compressed charcoal in small circles, all right? So what I'm doing is I want to use my vine as a way of pulling out that compressed grit in space. I can take my rolled up piece of paper, right? And you should be able to hear that skittering sound. It might be like nails on a chalkboard, so I am sorry if that's the case. What I'm doing is I'm just going over and I'm really trying to move in small circles because what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the grit into the paper so that I don't lose my compressed charcoal, okay? And I'm bouncing around a lot because remember, when you start adding your darkest dark, your eyes go right for it, right? They go right into the page. So when this was my darkest dark and it was the only thing that existed, it stood out a lot and it feels inaccurate. But the more I start moving this around, right? I gotta push through that scary part where it feels out of place, okay? Because it's gonna feel out of place. It is out of place. There isn't any other high contrast, right? So I need to add more. I need to push it around. And again, I'm just blending using my, my vine charcoal over my compress. They work as a team, right? I'm making little flicking gestures. I can use the side of my finger. I know that this class likes to be blendy, 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 right? But now here's a dilemma. I'm gonna like really exaggerate it over here so that you can see what the dilemma is. If I'm gonna get blendy, blendy, blendy with my fingers. Look, my edge got fuzzy and I lost my stripes, right? That's gonna be something that's gonna feel really frustrating for you. For a fuzzy edge, wham. You go back in with your eraser and you clean it up. Crispy, crunchy again. And then you blend a little bit so that it doesn't have a halo, okay? 
but if you start losing your stripes, what you do is you kind of use your compressed, or well, sorry, your vine charcoal to find where your stripes are again. And then you use your compressed to kind of lay in where some of these stripes might be and give them a little reinforcement, right? Because then what's happening is if the fabric is darker, the stripes are darker. If the fabric is darker, the pattern is darker. That's how it's gonna work, okay? See how that starts building, all right? You get a really strong sense of light there, whereas over here, we really still don't have it, okay? And I'm just gonna keep working in this knot. And I'm making quick marks, right? And they're fast and they're really bold. They look very dark. But I'm just going over what's already been established by my vine charcoal. So the work is there. I just have to reinforce it. And I have to be really gentle because again, vine charcoal is so sensitive, right? That I need to make sure that I'm not gonna accidentally erase out all my stripes and all my pattern work. You can see I'm reinforcing some of my stripes with compressed charcoal even. And I'm staying very sketchy, okay? This is similar to what we talked about the other day where like, it looks realistic from far away, but I'm really letting my texture and my mark making show through. And I can just keep trying to move so that my hand is not in your way. Uh, keep trying to maintain where my brightest brights and my darkest darks are. And you can see there's gonna be points where I'm gonna really let those stripes get bold, which is what I just did up here. High contrast stripes, okay? And I'm just using my vine charcoal over my compressed to try to blend it out. And then to make sure I've got a crispy, crunchy edge, all right, I'm going back over it. Now you can already see a big difference between here and here because of the contrast, right? This feels like it's further back in space, whereas this is coming too far forward now, right? This fabric needs to be behind. So again, that's where your compressed is gonna come into hand. Okay, and you need to follow the flow of your fabric. You need to curve and show what is going under, okay? Don't be afraid to let spaces get really dark. Right, your biggest fear is gonna be losing your patterning by getting too, too blended out. And you can see that by pulling the compressed charcoal over my stripes, I'm trying to avoid that problem because as I'm blending it, I'm carrying it over the marks that exist there already. It's kind of like painting in a paint by numbers almost. where where because my stripes are already existing in space I'm able to reinforce them and I'm able to just go over 
what's already done, right? And now I'm just trying to push my full value range. Okay, and you can see that areas are gonna feel really light and really popped out. Areas are gonna feel really dark. I'm gonna have to start deciding what shapes are gonna be at their darkest dark, right? And I'm committing to it. I'm really just gonna keep moving around these areas. and pushing my contrast. I'm gonna hit spots where I'm gonna lose my stripes again, right? And I can just, if I'm not confident enough to go in with my compressed charcoal, I'm gonna actually use my vine charcoal like a pencil for once. I can make a little bit of a map. For where those marks are and what's going on with them, right? And then I can follow it again. of those little chisel sounds that I make when I use my tool, right? I'm gonna show you me blending it out with a piece of smushed up paper, right? If your paper gets loose, you just tighten it up again, right? I just need something tiny and pointed, okay? And then I'm working in a small circular motion and I'm pushing down a lot because I'm pressing my compressed into my page, okay? And when I'm pressing, I'm getting rid of that grit texture and I'm pushing it into the surface of my paper. You can get to the point where there's so much charcoal on the surface that you can draw with it, okay? I, I made a really aggressive mark with compressed charcoal, so now that's gonna be a fun thing to try to get rid of later. Um, that's the other thing, remember, compressed charcoal's not very forgiving, so you have to really decide what's gonna be your darker dark, what's gonna be your lightest light. You're gonna need to be prepared that once you put this compress down, it's not gonna lift up the way that your vine is, which is both a really good thing and a little nerve wracking. So remember how often we talk about like, you know, our fear of committing to compressed charcoal, like really remember what's the worst that happens, right? And build it up in sections. You see how I'm moving my dark around a lot? And I'm gonna do things like take my kneaded eraser and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very quickly kind of shade that in so it blends out, but I'm gonna pop my highlights back in where I see them too. And that's, look at, my, look at how dark my hands get, right? It's working with compressed. I'm chiseling my kneaded eraser into the shape I want. at my surface, right? Because when I dab, I'm gonna lift off charcoal in a different way than when I push. And I'm just gonna keep moving through because it's gonna change, right? Like, I'm gonna have to constantly ask myself, you know, what's 
What's the lightest part of my drawing? What's the darkest part? Right? Do I leave this just as vine charcoal and I let it run the risk? I might for now. I'm gonna wait until I've pushed my darkest darks around to kind of reestablish where my value is. And now, if you wanna make a quick change, right? If you wanna do something dramatic and quick, similar to that shadow that's up there, I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? I'm going to establish part of my background. I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I'm gonna show where gravity is hitting, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my compressed And you can see I'm not super concerned with like making sure it's really nicely put in there because I'm gonna take my chamois and I'm gonna work it in tiny circles, All right? Tiny circles. I'm gonna be careful not to set my chamois on here because then I'll wipe everything away. some gradient down here to show kind of where the fabric is coming from because this is a big expansive shape it doesn't have as much details right because the knot is my actor these bunches of fabric are my supporting actors and stuff down here is just set design all right it's not as important for your eye to stay there but it's important for it to function enough to keep your your eye on the prize your eye on the page okay And so I'm gonna, all of the stripes that I've got established down there. And you see how much, like, just little changes, like pushing my background even further can make to what I'm doing here, can make to this fabric standing out and coming forward in space. It makes a big difference, okay? And you can do things like Go back in and shade individual stripes with your compressed charcoal, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm following this one. And I'm gonna blend it out a little bit. I'm using my vine charcoal again to pull my compressed into the shape that I want it to be. And then I've got areas over here where I'm afraid of my fabric, my stripes not going all the way to the edge. So I'm going to, and you can see, I'm not gonna set my hand down on my paper because then I'm gonna pull up too much charcoal. So I'm holding my hand or another trick is to rest a stick. All right, now I'm a little heavy handed for this. I'm gonna snap a stick like that, but it's a way of helping you if you're not good at supporting your own hand, okay? It's not yet. And I want to bring my stripe all the way to the edge of the fabric. Okay. And that's going to mean going back into this, into this shadow space a little bit. 
with my eraser. And I'd rather do that than not. So I'm gonna use my left hand and I'm going back in. You can see I'm pulling into that shadow space. You can see where I'm dragging the marks over it. Okay, it's because I saw a little charcoal outline along this edge and that wasn't gonna do. Then I'm gonna reinforce. Where my other stripes are because they got a little too horizontal. I'm not following the curve of the fabric just right. Okay. And then once again, back in. Wham, cleaning up that edge. Crunchy crispy, right? I actually even drew in a little bit, okay? Back in with my chamois. And now I've got a pattern that comes all the way to the edge, okay? An example of where it doesn't come all the way to the edge little bit over here all right but look at that difference that I'm making by just adding some of those darkest darks into these places see how these folds don't feel as dimensional as up here right so that's why it's so important to just keep pushing it and to make sure that you don't lose where that pattern is or where your compressed charcoal goes which is what I just did that you don't lose you know, your dimension, right? Let's see, my stripes are following there. I'm gonna use my tiny made up smudgy stick. making sure I don't lose my stripes. All right, and I'm also letting them curve with the object, right? You see how I'm making curving gestures? And I can always take my eraser and dab out my highlights if I ever feel like I'm going too dark, right? Because I'm using my compressed charcoal pretty sparingly. And that's what lets me keep building, okay? I'm gonna film another time-lapse of this so that you can see me work my drawing up to a whole. Um, you should be spending three hours on your drawing today. Your compressed charcoal needs to come in, your background fabric, your background shapes need to be established for it to be a completed drawing. Your pattern needs to cover the whole knot and you need your full range of value, okay? That'll all be written in the handout as well. Um, please enjoy the time-lapse and good luck. <laughs> 